Welcome to the Agenda, part one of our mid-season review. With me is Jay Clark from the Herald Sun. Jay, let's get back to our pre-season predictions. And you had absolutely no confidence right from the get-go. Ninth, we're opening explain the, yourself. We're opening the time capsule uh, here, Chris. So, look, I thought there was going to be big question marks over Collingwood, basically from a, a key forward perspective, with only Darcy Moore there. As good as the midfield is, um, I thought that was still going to be a big challenge. I mean, Collingwood were going to be around the mark all. And maybe 11 wins, I thought, from the get-go. You know, just finish mm. outside, competing with Melbourne and St Kilda. And with the new players coming in, I mean, Main, Wells, um, um, Main, Wells and Hoskin Elliott, you know, and Jamie Elliott with his injury history, Reed. I thought it was always going to be probably a step too far this year. But I think next year is where I'd be saying... Um, oh, okay. Top eight yeah, for the Pies. Yeah. Now, Pendlebury, you went out on a limb there to win the best and fairest. Well, that's looking correct. Uh, six, <laughs> six in a row. We're going to get to him later. It's going to be a historic season for Scotty. Most improved. I reckon you almost nailed that. Well, Braden Maynard, I think he's really grown in that uh, back pocket role. He's been tough. You know, I think he's been improving his ball use. He puts his life on the line every week for Collingwood. I admire that about him. And Ben Reid, the most important player. Oh, haven't we seen that? Um, his ball use uh, across half back, his aerial work with uh, Jeremy how he's been swung forward. What we need is another, what Collingwood needs is another one of him. <laughs> and he exists, Sam Reid. We'll talk to him, I think. Uh, talk about him in the next yeah. show. What about you, mate? Let's open well, your time capsule. I had eight. I yep. had Collingwood just sneaking in. How are you feeling? I'm feeling like it's still possible. There's mm. 10 games to go. Probably need to win seven games. Yep. But I look at the fixture, and we'll get to that as well. And I reckon there's a still a chance. I'm okay. still living in hope. I'm still living in hope. You will like to fill that glass half full rather yeah, than half course, empty, don't course. you? What about your Copeland medal winner? Who did you say? I reckon he's going pretty well. I've got big Grundy, big Brody, mm -hmm. and I think he's had two or three games where he's been absolutely outstanding. Yep. And I think from that perspective, then he's got a chance. He's going to have to have a really good second half of the season because I reckon your boy's doing pretty well, Scott Pendlebury. Mm, but yep. I reckon Brody has done an amazing job. Now, this is the uh, the concerning one, um, Chris. So who, who did you have as most improved? I've got Mason, Mason Cox. Look, it's hard to be most improved when you're not playing, Jay. <laughs> The big American, how's he travelling? Yeah, we had our expectations. Good. We did. Yep. I mean, he, he came into football, obviously, having not played a lot of football and really hit the scene really positively last yep. year. And yep. I was expecting some natural progression. Yep. He's only played a handful of games and, and look, hasn't shone out. I think what's really hurt him is the ability... We need ability in the forward line yep. to defend, and I think that's probably caught yep. him out. And if he's not grabbing the marks and kicking goals, well, he's then, a big fella. Yeah, and uh, that makes it hard. And we agree on most important. Yeah, we, we do indeed. Now, let's talk about what has worked yep. so far in season 2017. Yeah, I think you can split Collingwood's first half of the season almost in two halves. Although they beat Sydney and were very good against GWS early, very much Collingwood played a lot out of the boundary line um, in that in that first sort of six weeks from defence. Then <clears throat> against Geelong and thereafter, Christo, they clearly went more corridor-centric, went up the middle and took more risks with the ball, were more instinctive and more aggressive. And when you've got a midfield like um, they do, Chalor, Sidebottom, Adams, Scotty Pendlebury, these blokes getting on their bike, winning high possession numbers and attacking the game through the middle, that's when we've seen Collingwood really, um, uh, really shine. And yeah, it has been an inconsistent season. I think Travis Varco, although he's missed the past, what, five or six weeks with a hamstring injury in a serious one, Chris, though, I think what we saw from him, just a glimpse in that Geelong game yeah. as the spare man, yeah. he's got that speed to break a line. He sort of has that extra dimension. And he's got the ball use, too. Yeah, he, I, I think 84.3% efficiency. So while uh, Collingwood has really missed him, I think in the second half of the year, him funneling the ball, attacking the game from the half-back line, really rounds out that midfield mm. threat. What's worked? for you, mate? Well, I reckon the fact in recent weeks we've had the small forward line, which yep. has necessitated Darcy Moore to get into the ruck. Yep. And I think it's been a real positive for Darcy. I think he's shown us what he's capable of in the ruck. And I don't want to put too much pressure on here, yep. Jay, but I reckon in two, three, four years' time, yep. he could be the dominant ruckman in the competition. Go permanent ruck. Absolutely. He's, as long as he built, he's got to build up a bit of body strength wow. for around the ground stuff. But his How ability... What's Brodie Grundy going to do? Well, he, we'll find a role for Brodie. But, uh, but potentially... And look, Darcy, 
by pure nature of his Ford craft, yep. will we'll spend still spend a lot of time there. But yeah. I still it's think, and what we've fire, seen, yeah. and what we've seen, yep. his ability to leap at the centre square, his athleticism around the ground, his ball use, uh, it could be yep. anything. And he you know who he reminds me of? Who? He reminds me, and I'm old enough to say this. He yeah. reminds me of his dad. Yes. And he could be an absolutely dominant ruckman. So that that's mm. I think been a real positive, giving him an opportunity yep. to get on the ball, get a touch of touch of the footy, build his confidence, and it's resulted in more disposals. It's even resulted in, on or in him kicking more goals, which is a positive. He was criticised early for his forward work, but has is now fifth for contested marks in the league. Yeah. For a, what a 21 year old, that is excellent. The question right. is going to be on his durability in the second half of the season because he's played every game mm. for a young man. It's a big load. What hasn't worked, Jay? Well, it's all forward structure. We touched on um, Mason Cox earlier. You go back to round one, Maine's in the team. I think a, a late inclusion. Cox um, and Jesse White. Now, White's kicked four goals along with your man Cox uh, and Maine three. Now, from those four, first four rounds, Nathan Buckley and his coaching team have gone totally in a different direction with a much smaller setup. Looking for Fasolo, Will Hoskin, Elliott. Um, uh, Elliott, when he came in, obviously Greenwood, side bottom goals, Pendlebury goals, Dugowie goals. So really, and this is in line with the whole competition, the whole competition has gone for a smaller, more mobile forward line. I is, don't it, think... is it sustainable? I think so. I think so, but you've still got to have some depth there. So... Um, Brodie Grundy and, and Darcy Moore played every game. Now, what happens if these guys get injured? Then who does Collingwood turn to? So they're still, they still desperately need to bolster that key forward division. But I think when Jamie Elliott is in the team, and we've seen how important uh, he is, when Hoskin Elliott's running, when Fasolo's there marking and, uh, and, and crumbing at ground level, I think it is a, a dangerous-ish uh, dangerous mm. forward line. Mm. But just without Elliott, it, it does yeah, really it fall actually, down. It does like a bit of class. Because I would argue that... It's not sustainable, yep. and that we need another tall target. And I've got the answer coming up about who that person oh, may well be. Okay. Uh, I want to well, talk. About you? Yeah, I want to talk about inside fifty efficiency. Yeah, uh, it has improved, but the club ranked second and ranked second in number of inside fifties, which is a phenomenal effort. So you're doing a lot right to to get that Absolutely. supply forward. Yeah, but the club ranks fifteen. 15th in converting goals from those inside 50 yeah. entries. So there's clearly there's clearly a problem. So is that a conversion thing or a midfield kicking thing? Well, it's it's I think it comes back to particularly early on in the season when the ball movement was really stilted. Yep. And the ball, the entries in the inside 50 were shallow yep. and it made it easy for opposition teams to defend. So yep. I think that's one of the aspects. I think that's improved dramatically as you touched on in terms of the speed of the ball through the corridor. Yep. I think it's made it easier. Mm -hmm. And that ratio has improved over the last four or five weeks. Yep. But our conversion in the early part of the season, and I'm talking here just set goal kicking, yep. was just horrible. Abysmal. The worst, yeah. It has improved as well. But the combination of getting the ball inside the attacking 50 quickly and efficiently and then converting with our set shots are the two keys. It has improved, but certainly early on in the season, yeah. it was a problem. And that's where Adam Trelaw, as good a player as he is, can probably improve his kicking inside mm. 50. I think two of his 37 first inside 50s led to marks or something like that. So that's the part of the game, as much as we love him, which you can probably polish up on. Now we've got an opportunity just yeah. to praise one individual. Yep. Is there someone that you just love yep. that you want to just give the pump up to? I think Taylor Adams deserves a lot of recognition. Now I've been saying all year, uh, Chris O, that he has become the equal of Heath Shaw. And I think he's just surging ahead. Remember the two were traded a few years ago. Look, I saw him uh, in the car park after the loss at the weekend, and he looked as shattered as a player as I've seen all year. Look, he looked really flat, but he is 12th in the competition for contested possessions. His leadership has been excellent. He's an underrated runner. He's going to improve his ball use as his, his career develops. I think he's just been such a, um, a reliable and determined uh, midfield ball winner for Collingwood. Um, and, and I think he's going to have an excellent 10-year career. Yeah. And he bleeds for the cause. You had to see him oh, after yeah. the weekend the loss. I mean, he, he was really hurting. I think, I think, I think he's been a great move for Collingwood, as no, much as he's sure maybe hurt initially. I agree with that. I think you touched on the ball use. So yep. sometimes I think it's not so much his execution, it's his decision-making, trying yep. to take that 
make that perfect kick. Yeah. Um, sometimes well, I think that lets him down. But he's the general could, sort of couldn't back argue about his lead. Yeah, he's, yeah. been, he's been phenomenal. Where yeah. are you going to go, mate? I'm going to pump up an obvious one. Okay? I'm going to pump up the man, the obvious <laughs> one. Jeremy Howe. Yep. He has been an absolute revelation. We yeah. said three weeks ago on the agenda, maybe even four weeks ago, about the fact that he will be a lock All-Australian. Yep. He, his intercept marking has just been of an amazing quality. Yep. He leads Collingwood in marks, 102, 44 intercept marks. So now close the ga- to leading the comp, I reckon. The game has mm. changed where back in the old days it was you spoil from behind. Mm. But the ability of someone like Jeremy Howe to, to take intercept marks yep. is absolutely crucial. Yep. And, of course, I'm not, I'm not even and haven't even mentioned the spectacular aspect to his play, which yep. we saw in full flight uh, against Melbourne at the MCG. One that but jumps off the he page has the, been outstanding. Then the ball use too at 80%. So they're backing yeah, him to absolutely. be the quarterback yep. back there along with um, Ben Reid. We're talking about um, winning the, uh, the Copeland before. I reckon he would be the dark horse. Yeah. He's the smoky. Yeah. How could, with a good second half of the year, he could maybe beat yeah. Pendles. All right, yeah, there's I no doubt about that. I think he finished top five last year. All right, Jay, that's it. That's all we've got time for, part one of our mid-season review. But we'll be back Monday with part two. Don't miss it.